What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. So in March of this year, I purchased the Shure MV88 microphone and made a review video for that microphone and uploaded it to YouTube. So in the past four months, since then, it's been one of the highest performing videos on my channel. So what that tells me is you are all interested in this microphone, you're interested in seeing what it can do. I've also gotten a lot of DMs lately from you um, asking about my process and how I'm making my multi-track videos. So in this video today, I'm going to show you how to make multi-track recordings using only a Shure MV88 microphone and an iPad. If you want to know how to do it, this video is for you. So in this video today, I'm teaching you my process for making multi-track audio recordings using only a Shure MV88 and your iPad. Just so you can get an idea of how this sounds, like what the finished product sounds like, if you haven't checked out some of my videos, um, here are some you can check out that I have done totally with this process, only with these two things, sure, MV88 and iPad. You can check out Tequila, Say Something, Imagine, and Africa. All done with sure MV88s and the process that I'm going to show you today. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you don't miss what I have coming up next because I have plenty more multi-track videos like this coming your way. So if you haven't seen my Shure MV88 mic review video that I already mentioned, in that video I mostly talked about recording with your Shure MV88 into your iPhone and then using the Motive Audio app. So if you're curious about the Shure Motive Audio app that comes with the Shure MV88 and going into your iPhone, please go check that out now. So in that video, I talked all about my preferred settings within the Motive Audio app, as well as some of the pros and the cons about recording in that way. So back in March, when I purchased the microphone and made that video, um, that was definitely my preferred method of using the microphone. Yeah, you'll see if you watch the video, a lot of like cons to recording in that way for what I do. Um, doing the brass multi-tracks and like something with a lot of different tracks. So, Basically, I would still send everything over to GarageBand on my computer. Uh, it, it was just like a really confusing process and it added an extra step. So uh, my friend Teo Guthrie actually saved my life, changed my life. He mentioned that you can plug the Shure MV88 into your iPad and record directly into GarageBand. Um, this is a way easier process. Um, it just kind of takes an extra step out. Because what I was doing, I was recording into Motive and then sending everything over to my computer and doing GarageBand anyway. This just cuts out a step. It makes it super easy. GarageBand is awesome. It's super easy to use and it's free. So thank you again, Teo, for that tip. You've saved me a lot of time. Like, a lot of time. <laughs> um, so with that said, yeah, multi-tracking, definitely I recommend Shure MV88 into your iPad using GarageBand. But I will say, um, using the Motive apps, there's Motive Audio and Motive Video, actually, which I'm using right now to record this speaking video. Um, those are still great apps if you're recording one video. You know, I use it for my talking videos, or let's say you're doing a recording, you're just recording an etude or something, it's just you, just one musical line. I still think it's great to use the um, Shure Motive apps for that, but for multi-tracking, definitely GarageBand. Okay, so before we get started, the first thing you need to do is download the GarageBand app into your iPad if it's not already there. So next, you're gonna plug in your Shure MV88 into your iPad and open up the app. Press the plus sign up in the upper left-hand corner and then go to Create New Song. From here, make sure the tracks is selected up at the top. It should be a little blue slider. And then you should see an audio recorder icon. If you play trombone like me or another wind instrument, you might be tempted to click the instrument icon down below. But my advice is don't. <laughs> um, I've messed around with a lot of these settings and for the instruments that they have, it's mostly guitar, keyboard, drums. Um, I've messed around with the settings and I really didn't like the way they sounded for a wind instrument. They just had a lot of effects on them, a lot of reverb, and it just like wasn't what I was looking for. Um, when I am recording, I like to have the most clean sound possible, like the most clean and natural sound. And then if I do add any effects, if I add any reverb, I like to add it at the end. So I like having that control. But if you wanna experiment with all the different sounds, you know, by all means, knock yourself out. So from the audio recorder screen, I suggest using the voice icon. So you can tap the little voice icon down below or you can just tap the big microphone in the center. It'll bring you to the same thing. On the next screen, you'll see this notification pop up. 
Basically, it is just saying that your iPad is recognizing your Shure MV88 and it is asking if you want to turn on monitoring. So monitoring means that you can hear yourself in your headphones while you're playing. My preference is I always like to have it on because um, usually I'm recording with other tracks, whether that be a MIDI file or the metronome or click track or other, you know, instrument tracks, other trombone tracks. I want to hear what I'm playing along with those mixed in. So my advice is to turn on your monitoring. You can always turn this off and on um, throughout the process if you like, but I like it on. So the default, when you do press that big microphone in the center, um, it's gonna bring you to the vocal settings. And like I said, with the experimenting I've done, I really like the way these vocal settings sound for my trombone better than any of the instrument settings. Um, depending on what instrument you play or what kind of sound you're going for, you might wanna do some experimenting. But like I said, this is my preference. I think it sounds best for brass instruments. So of all the vocal settings, the one I prefer is just the one that comes up first. It is the lead vocals setting. That's my favorite that I found so far. I do make one adjustment to the very beginning though. On the little knob that says vocal hall, I make sure that is all the way turned down or turn off. This vocal hall setting sounds like really heavy reverb, you know, like you're in a a big hall, a concert hall or something. And I, like I said, I like to keep my recordings natural um, at the beginning. So I like to turn that all the way off so it has more of a flat and clean sound. Then I add any of my effects in at the end when I'm mixing and mastering, like any reverb or anything like that. On the left-hand side of the screen, you're gonna see a slider for your input volume. As you can see, this is where I like mine for trombone. It's about a third of the way, you know, up from the bottom or two thirds of the way down. It's pretty low. Um, you know, trombone is a pretty loud instrument. So I like to keep the input level low. Um, we'll get into mic placement a little later in the video, but yeah, um, I can imagine it's going to be the same for any front facing brass instrument. You know, they're loud instruments. You're going to want to have that volume down. Now, if you play a different kind of instrument, maybe something soft, like a violin or a flute or something, you know, that's going to vary and you're going to have to experiment with that. But for trombone, yes, turn it down. Okay, let's set up our track. So at the top of the screen on the left hand side, you're going to see three different icons. Click the one in the middle that looks like a bunch of Tetris blocks. So this is the screen where you're going to be spending the most of your time. It shows you all of your tracks, your metronome up at the top and a timeline. When I make my multi-track recordings, I always prefer to record at least the first part along with the original MIDI track. And I do this just so I can have some sort of audio reference while I'm recording. It also really helps when you're setting up your track just to have the whole thing in there and like the timeline. It definitely helps you kind of know where you're gonna place everything. Um, another thing I do right off the bat is set up my metronome. We'll talk about that a little more in a minute. So when you first open up the project, you'll notice that it is only eight measures long. Um, this is the way GarageBand does it. Um, they just make it so you can do your song in sections um, and you can label them how you want. But when I'm doing my projects, I like to have it just like all in one big timeline. I don't like to chunk it up from the beginning. So at the end of that timeline, at the end of the eighth measure, there is a plus sign in the upper right hand corner. Go ahead and press that and it's gonna bring up a screen like this. From here, press section A and then switch it on to automatic. What this is gonna do is once you input that mini track, um, the project is automatically going to match the length of the track that you put in. Before we can put our MIDI track into the GarageBand project, we need to make sure that it is in your iCloud drive. Now, I'm sure there are many different ways to do this, but let me show you my favorite way. So my favorite way to share files and move files around while I'm doing this project is definitely Google Drive. So I already have the Google Drive app downloaded to my iPad. So in the Google Drive app, go ahead and push on the folder of the project that you're working on. So today I'm gonna give you all a little sneak peek into an upcoming collaboration project. It's Lean On Me. So we're gonna click on the folder for Lean On Me. So next, um, press um, the track that you want. So I'm gonna press my mini track here and then let it load first before we move it over. Um, it usually just takes a few seconds, so just wait for it to load. So then in the upper right hand corner, you're gonna press the three dots and then press open in. Then the file will prepare to export. Um, might take another few seconds, so just be patient. Then you're going to press add to iCloud Drive. Next, press iCloud Drive. Now let's go back into GarageBand and add in our mini track. Next, you're gonna press the loop icon, which is up in the top right-hand corner. It's the first one in the group of three. 
Once you press that, make sure audio files is selected at the top in blue. Then at the bottom, press import from iCloud Drive. Then you should see an audio file of the track that you sent over to your iCloud Drive. Press it. It will then load your audio file. From there, you can just drag the file over into your GarageBand project, into your GarageBand timeline. Um, once I move over my MIDI file, I like to move it up into the top of my project. It just helps me keep it organized, and I have my reference MIDI right at the top there. All you have to do is press and hold the little mic icon on the left and then just drag it right up to the top. Next is arguably the most important part in this entire process. You do not want to mess this up. Um, if you don't do it at the beginning, it can cause trouble down the road. Trust me, I've learned this many times the hard way. So the most important part of this whole process is setting up your metronome, making sure everything is in time and lined up. You want to do this at the beginning. Next, you're gonna click the wrench icon up in the top right, and this is gonna take us to the settings for our entire project. So here we can set up the tempo, the time signature, and the key signature of the song. So for Lean On Me, the tempo is 74 beats a minute, the time signature is 4-4, and the key is C major. Pretty simple. Next, you wanna make sure your MIDI track is lined up with the metronome. Up at the top, you can see each bar or each beat. So make sure the first note of your track is lined up with the first beat if it starts on beat one. Um, I usually like to give myself a couple bars up front, depending what the tempo is like. So this song is pretty slow, so I'm just gonna give us one bar up front, just to have a little bit of space. This will also help you if you're gonna record videos too, um, just leaving some space up front. So I'm gonna drag the first note of my MIDI track over to bar two. We're gonna start on bar two. Anytime you can press on your blue track and it'll turn yellow, and then you can just slide it around. You can slide it back and forth wherever you need to move it. If you're having trouble doing this or you can't quite see where a nose starts, um, the cool thing with the iPad is if you use two fingers and touch your track um, and spread your fingers apart, then you can zoom into your track. So you can zoom in and out whenever you need it, slide it back and forth, move it around wherever it needs to go. It's really easy. Okay. Phew, we're all set up. Now we can record our first track. So we already actually set up that first initial track, so it's already in there, it's already ready to go. So what we need to do now is talk about mic placement, get set up, plug in our headphones, and let's do this. Okay, so now let's talk about mic placement. Um, as you can see, I have my Shure MV88 plugged into the iPad, so I no longer have it on my iPhone. So sorry, the audio change is a little different here. But yeah, um, I have it set up on a music stand here on the left. I have my music right here. And I'm gonna be recording the bass trombone part first. Sorry, it's like a first person view. Um, so I like to have the bell of the instrument maybe about a foot or two away from the microphone. Okay, and then as you can see, the microphone's like kind of tilted out to the side a little bit. Um, I don't like to have like a straight on angle. I like it just tilted a little bit to the side, a foot or two away. See my reflection in there, hi. The mic placement is gonna vary based on the volume that you are playing at. Um, it's the whole like singer with the microphone thing, you know? When you're singing loud high notes, you wanna be farther away from the mic. Um, low stuff, quiet stuff, closer to the mic. So yeah, I like the default about a foot or two away from the bell. Um, obviously for really loud high stuff, you're gonna either need to get farther away from the microphone or turn down the input level. Okay, so here's a side view of what I mean with the bell being a foot or two in front of the microphone. And sorry I'm wearing shorts, <laughs> you got me. the track that you recorded is right below the MIDI so go ahead and listen back and see if you like it if you like what you hear you want to keep it that's good but if you don't like it and you want to record again go ahead and tap the track and then click on delete try as many times as you need to to get the track sounding exactly the way you want it for more complex projects sometimes I will add multiple tracks for one part and take like three takes of each one just so I have multiple options to choose from. But for today, we're just keeping it pretty simple. We're just gonna do one track. So we're just gonna re-record until we get what we like. So let me show you another super, super important thing in this entire process. Almost as important as setting up the Met correctly at the beginning is the undo button. You will definitely need this. 
Uh, definitely learned that the hard way. Again, that's how we learn. So yes, the undo button is clutch. You're gonna need it. If you accidentally delete something, you can just click on the undo button and it comes right back. So once you're happy with what your track sounds like, let's go ahead and add the next one. So at the top left corner, press the icon farthest to the left with the big square in the middle and then the two little squares on the side. This will bring us back to our audio recorder. So this should all look familiar. We're gonna repeat the same exact process that we did way back in the beginning of this video. So click that big microphone in the center, turn the volume hall all the way down or off, and then check out your input level to make sure it is the same as it was before. Remember I said I had mine about like one third up. Um, usually it does this automatically, so you shouldn't see any changes, but just double check just to be sure. Now click that little Tetris block icon again up at the top and you will notice that the new track you just created is now added to your project. It's the one on the bottom. So check this out. You can slide out this little screen here on the left. You see those like three lines you like toggle it out, slide it out. Um, and you're going to see all your tracks and then all the volume settings. So what you can do is change the volume around for the different tracks to um, hear more of something, less of something. Um, you can turn the MIDI on and off, and then you can also check out if your monitor is on. So you want the monitor on on the track that you are currently recording. So you can tell here if it's orange, it means it's on. If it's gray, it means it's off. So you can change all those settings in here, and then when you're done, you can just slide it back over. So for example, I'm recording trombone three now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the MIDI way down. I'll probably just keep just a little of it still in for context. Um, and then I'm gonna turn the bass trombone way up so I can really hear um, and lock into that intonation down on the bass notes. This is all about personal preference. It's what you need to hear, what you wanna hear, and you can change this stuff at any time throughout the recording. Okay, here we go, trombone three. So now you see the trombone three track here on the bottom. Again, listen back, see if you like it, re-record as necessary. Now trombone two, same exact process. So we'll go through that all again. Okay, everyone, excuse the glare. Okay, so now we have all three tracks recorded. There they are, one, two, three. Trombone one is resting right now, so um, only three tracks. So we're gonna slide this out. Whoops, slide that out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the MIDI all the way off now. Um, and I kind of toggled these around. Um, you can kind of set the volumes of the different tracks. You can kind of mess around with them. And then you're gonna listen to all three together, see if you like it. So like I said, you can go ahead and change this around if one um, track needs to be louder or softer. You know, get the level you kind of like. Cool, and if you are satisfied with what you hear, I'll show you what to do next. So from here, you have two options. For more simple projects, like something we did today, you can definitely do all of your editing and get everything all set up within GarageBand on your iPad. If you're a beginner, I totally suggest you start there. You know, you just re-record as necessary and you can slide stuff around as necessary. Just do everything from within your iPad. But for most of you who have seen my multi-track videos, they can get pretty complex. Um, you know, I've been doing anywhere four or five, six trombone parts, plus lots of effects and all this other stuff. So for me, it's easier to do that over in GarageBand on my MacBook. It's just way easier for me to get in there, you know, um, using my keyboard and my little mouse pad thing instead of using my fingers on the iPad. And I feel like GarageBand over on the MacBook just has more options. Um, especially if you're getting into making drum tracks and stuff like that, it has more sounds. So for me personally, I prefer editing over on my computer. 
But that's the super cool part about recording this way. You know, you can kind of level up as you need to. It's, it's really easy. You know, all you need is your Shure MV88 and then the iPad. And if you want to keep it simple, you can do everything from within there. But if you want to get more complex and add more complex editing stuff onto it, then you can send the entire project intact over to your computer. I love it. It's like the same exact project that you see right now. You can send it over your computer, see the same exact thing and just kind of pick up where you left off. I think that's like an amazing feature. So to export your project over to your computer, press my songs up in the top left corner and it'll bring you to this screen. The project you just recorded should be in the top left corner. And mine is called my song Two. Very creative. <laughs> so what I like to do right away is rename that project so I know what it is. It helps me stay organized, especially if you're doing a lot of recording projects. This thing can flood up really quickly. And if you have a bunch of my song twos or my song one, my song two, my song three, you're gonna get confused what's what. So rename it right away so you don't get confused. So to rename it, just press on the text on the title of the song. It'll bring you to the screen and then you can change the title of the song. So I'm gonna change it to Lean On Me. Next, hit select up in the upper right hand corner and this will make all your projects start to wiggle, you know, like they do on an iPhone or an iPad or something. This is gonna show you that they're ready to move. They're ready to go somewhere. So highlight the project that you want to move by pressing on it. So I'm going to highlight Lean On Me, it's going to turn blue. And then I am going to hit the share button up in the upper left hand corner. So I'm an airdrop kind of girl. I think it is the easiest and fastest way to move files around from device to device. So that's how I move my files. So I'm going to airdrop this project over to my MacBook. And I definitely need to update my pictures. You can tell these are from college. I haven't seen glasses like that in 15 years. So here's where you can pick to send it over as a GarageBand project or an audio file. So I'm gonna press GarageBand project because that's what I'm gonna send over. So this is where if you did all of your editing within GarageBand on your iPad, what you would do at this point is you would share as an audio file because your project is complete. And there you have it. That's how I've recorded some audio projects using only the Shure MV88 and an iPad. I think it's actually like a pretty easy process and What's really cool about it is you don't need a lot of equipment, right? It's just two things to get yourself recording. Why I started recording in this manner um, was because I was doing a lot of traveling this year and I still wanted to have a way to record videos when I wasn't in my home setup or my home studio using like a microphone, actually just that one right back there, the Shure SM57, you know, has the, a microphone cable and a mic stand and then goes into the interface into the computer and you know I was going to be traveling a lot and I couldn't carry all that with me so it's definitely a nice option to have just these two devices you can really make a lot of you know I think somewhat decent recordings at home so I know this was a long video and a complicated process but please if you have any questions leave them down below and I will try my best to help you out and if any of you watching this video have any comments or tips or tricks or things that you've learned or things that you know that will help us all, leave them down below for us to read. If I have a lot of interest in this video, I'm definitely considering making one in the future of my editing process over on my computer. You know, what happens after I sent that project over to um, my computer for editing. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, let me know down in the comments as well. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I have new videos every week. And I will see you then. Bye.